Hello, welcome to this next uh, Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at UV mapping. Now, I'm starting off in Elden Ring um, just to, you know, show you the results of some nice UV mapping. Uh, so we can see, you know, all around me, we've got some beautiful objects and they're, you know, textured nicely. You know, nothing's breaking the eye. You can see everything, everything looks good. These plants, and the grass, um, this little ghosty fella over here. Um, so everything looks good and you know part of the reason it looks good is because it has a UV map without a UV map you can't apply any kind of texture or material or shader to uh, an object so you have to be able to UV map okay that being said uh, there are lots of different ways to UV map um, and we're going to go through a few of them um, some people will say a UV map doesn't really matter you can just use the easiest way um, those people are wrong and they're more than welcome to their opinion um, but you know I think a UV map is a good thing to uh, to to have you know uh, it's a great start to almost any uh, texturing process no matter what you're going to do um, whether you're going to paint a texture or use tiling or even a material a shader rather you know you're going to want a UV map and you know if you're looking to work um, and make money from models then you know you're going to want a UV, good UV map otherwise people are going to be annoyed when they get them <laughs> um, and if you're you know demonstrating to a client that you know what you're doing that you understand modeling and UVing and topology you know having a good UV map is a really good demonstration of that so we're going to go through a few different options and then you know we'll um, UV map some uh, simple items and uh, some uh, slightly more complicated ones and then we'll go from there uh, but as I say without a nice UV map none of this looks nice none of this is possible uh, so I will talk to you in the next section Okay, so let's get into Blender. I'm just going to launch my Blender here, and uh, I'm on version 3.4.1 still. Um, and we're just going to launch a general scene. So, <coughs> uh, to help us see what's happening with our UV mapping, I'm going to apply a UV map texture to this. So, if I go over to the Material uh, tab here, and make sure I've got a material. Uh, if you haven't, you know it will look like this and you can just hit plus and then you and that will put a material onto your onto your model uh, and then down here on base color we're going to switch that over to image texture by clicking on the little yellow dot and selecting image texture and then click new uh, we'll give it a name just call it checker and 1024 by 1024 is fine in this case it's just uh, demonstration purposes and then I'm going to put a color grid on it and then click OK and now to be able to see it I'm going to go over to uh, the uh, shading mode up here so viewport shading so I'm going to click that and there we go we can see now this looks lovely because it has a UV on it um, so it's the default UV and everything uh, is good if I go over to the UV editing room and just press A there you can see that's the UV and it's on this map and that's all good everything's fine and dandy um, but as soon as you make a change to this model um, the UV map is going to come out of sync um, it, it's not going to be able to calculate what's going on so if I select um, polygon mode here and on this top I'm just going to press the I key for inset and then bring that in and then the E key for extrude and bring that down and then I'm just going to press A and now we can see our UV map here now I can't see it over here because <laughs> it's in a different mode so I'm just going to switch it over to textured mode and there we go so the UV now, I mean, it's okay. It's done a, a half decent job, um, but you can see down here that this polygon 
is not working right and now it's that one or that one or that one and that's because uh, if I select one of those or perhaps two you can see that they're just flat lines and that's no good you know that's just taking basically a, a pixel and smearing it down the whole polygon which is of no use to us at all so <clears throat> um, while our primitives start off with the UV map once you've done all your modeling um, it's not going to it's really unlikely to be uh, uh, good still so we need to you know do some updates okay so the very first option I'm going to use I'm going to use two basic options um, and then tell you why I use a particular one so if I select A over here uh, I will select all of my polygons and then I can use a UV or oh, click on UV rather come down to unwrap and whoops couldn't see there and then smart UV project I'm just gonna uh, accept all of the defaults there and basically what that's done is projected a array from each um, side of the cube from front back left right up and down and then where it's seen a polygon it's mapped here so now if I just hit this sync button this is very useful if I hit this sync button uh, my UV map will always be displayed and if I select a polygon it's going to highlight in the 2D and in the 3D view so this polygon here is this one here and now we can see that that is is mapped correctly now there is a benefit to this in that it is a really easy method um, if you just want to get up and going and you want to get painting then it's fine um, but it's not ideal in my opinion uh, because we can see that the kind of flow of the texture our checkered background uh, doesn't go from polygon to polygon so this one's in this green area up here this one's in this blue area down here this one's in another area and this one's in another area completely so that's the sort of thing that I personally try and avoid especially if you know if you're doing a tiling texture um, it's especially uh, irritating so what we'll do is in the next video we'll have a look at um, an un uh, the unwrap method uh, whereby we will define the seams ourselves and then um, let the model unwrap so I'll talk to you then okay so I've started a new scene in blender um, just hide my shortcut thingy there there we go now we've got the shortcut keys down the bottom lovely um, so <coughs> we're going to have a look at just a standard cube and what i'm going to do is uh what we did previously so i'm going to go into the uv room and i've got a pretty good uv map on this so i don't really need to uv it but i'm going to show you how to do it anyway um so first of all i'm going to press my sync button up here it's very important and uh, so now i can select things in one window and it shows me the corresponding selection in the other window um, and then what we'll do is just reset this map uh, so if I go to UV and I can reset and it will just pile it over uh, itself <clears throat> okay so let's add a uh, material to this or an image rather so click on the little yellow dot there image texture new and then I'll set it to uh, color grid and okay there we go now I want to view it over here so I'll click my uh, shaded uh, uh, viewport shading option and as you can see here this is um, this has put the entire tile on each side and that's great you know there are uses for that um, but what we want to do here is to unwrap this now there is a general principle behind unwrapping um, so the first principle is you should have as few seams as possible now the reason for that is every time we put in a seam it will disconnect the texture uh, flow if you like 
So if I can demonstrate that, let me go back to the other view and go to edge mode. That will need to be in edit mode first. There we go. Uh, oh, no, I was in edit mode. I appear to be having a moment. There we go. <laughs> I've got it selected now. Okay, so to set a, uh, a seam, what we could do is select an edge and then right click and mark seam. And you should see then that that now turns up red and that's indicating that there's a seam on that edge. So <clears throat> we want to unwrap this fully and we want there to be as few seams as possible. Uh, but the second principle is that we want there to be as little distortion as possible. So if I unwrap this at the moment, uh, so we press A to select all and then right click in the uh, 2D view and unwrap it. Now, there's not enough seams to this for this to unwrap without some distortion. You can see that, you know, if I select the whole model, it's just unwrapped it to a whole, just a line down the side because it, it's there's not enough seams. So we have to have enough seams, but we want to limit those seams to some extent. So uh, for this one, I'm going to select these two sides here and then right click and mark seam not mark sharp let's unwrap that and now we're getting something slightly better in that we've got one whole side has unwrapped nicely um if i select that one let's go into poly mode there that's that side there so all the other sides are just a mishmash and if I turn on the shaded viewport view, you can see what's going on there. I've got one side that looks okay, even if it's a bit wonky. Uh, and all the other sides are uh, completely mad. So let's continue to unwrap. So I can now see I'm going to need to have uh, many more seams here. So let me switch there so you can see what I'm up to. Uh, so basically, for each side, I'm going to need to unwrap uh, or add a seam on most of it so if I add those two there right click and mark seam and similarly I'll do that on the other side right click and mark seam I always lose it I don't know what it, what it is I don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> no brain perhaps uh, so if I then press A to select everything right click and unwrap and now we're back to our original kind of um, unwrap just how it was when it was default so I've used the fewest amount of seams I can to get an unwrap which means that I have no distortion everything's fine you know I can read all of the things I can see all the boxes nothing is you know particularly unpleasant um, <clears throat> and even for these boxes down here, if I select that one, whoops, helps if I'm in the right selection mode. If I select all down there, all of those follow on from each other until they get to the end here, this A3. And then it wraps around to the bottom, which is fine. Um, what I don't have essentially is between here and here, I've got a big gap. So if this were a tiling texture, you would see, um, you know, a big disconnect there, a big difference in the texture. OK, so that is the um, the absolute basics on the simplest possible model you could possibly want to do. Um, in the next one, I've got a little barrel that I've made uh, and we're going to um, put our principles into action and see how that works. So I will talk to you then. Right, let's uh, start this off again. So I'll go uh, new and general. Don't save. And I'm going to delete this cube out. Uh, now I've got a barrel that I've made, which I'll hopefully make available to you. Uh, so import my front object. Uh, I put it in my little testing environment uh, I think <laughs> uh, come on where is it my truck there we go let's sort that into modified order there we go there we go 
and there's my barrel okay so here we have it's a very simple little barrel it's quite low poly and uh, there is no UV map on it at all we're going to edit mode there we go you'll see it's just one big polygon so everything's stacked over everything else and it's you know no good to us at all really um so what i want to do is unwrap this and i want to unwrap it again to my two principles as few as seams as possible and with as little distortion as possible so this is actually in a couple of different pieces so if i uh, just hover over the barrel piece there and press l it will select the barrel so we're going to do that first if i press shift and h it will hide everything else and then into edge mode and for this i need to cut the top off so if i alt click on that line there and then alt uh, shift alt click on the bottom line that will select the loop all the way around top and bottom and i can right click and mark those seams whoops that wasn't seams that was sharp there we go i do that a lot <laughs> so let's just unwrap this see what it looks like so a a to select all and unwrap I'm just going to make sure my sinks on there we go okay so this is what i've got um and you might think this looks all right because i've got three distinct islands and they don't look too bad um but this uh, is going to distort a lot and we can demonstrate that by um on our material if you haven't got one as i say you can click the plus button in object mode so i have to go to object mode for that to either delete or add my material and then new and then click on the base color uh, we want image texture new switch that over to color grid and click ok there we go so if i pop that in there you'll see i've got very little um distortion on the top and the bottom um but on the barrel it's all over the place so we need to sort that distortion out and we need to do that by adding a new seam so let me go back into edit mode there we go now i can just see the barrel and what i want to do is add a seam uh basically down the back so if i press one I'll get the front view if i press shift one i'll get the back view so what i want is to define a seam all the way down the back so in edge mode i'm just gonna quickly select all of those down there and then right click and mark seam there we go and now if i press a to select all and then right click and unwrap and now we can see that my barrel is nicely uh, mapped we've got very little distortion on it i do have a seam down the back you know that's not so bad these days with 3d painting programs and such like you can handle seams much better than if you were doing it on in say photoshop or, or such like um but yeah there we go so having the seam around the top is unavoidable i have to cut the top off otherwise it's um, not going to uh, work very well and similarly for the bottom but there we go so we've got three seams one around top one around the bottom one down the back and we're all ready to go you'll note that where i've defined a seam it now shows up in red that's a nice visual cue as to where your seams are okay so let me just press um, alt and h to unhide the straps and then i'm going to press uh, l over the top of the barrel itself and just press h on its own and that's given me my um, straps only so uh, these look really really high res because essentially what it's done is it's put the checker texture on every polygon uh, so it looks really high uh, res but it doesn't look right <laughs> okay so let's uh, just switch over to the unshaded mode and what uh, what we're going to do right so i'm going to separate the back from the front so alt and click on an edge and then shift alt click on another 
and another and another. So I've selected the inner uh, top and bottom ring on each of these and then right click and mark seam. And if I then unwrap these, we're going to get kind of circles and that's not quite right. And if you look at the UV map, you'll see why uh, it's not. Well, maybe it's not too bad, but I can see there's a lot of distortion and the distortion is mostly showed up by you see these lines. They should be straight. They're curving and that's uh, you know not what we want. It may be good enough for a shader, uh, but not good enough for me in terms of painting or a tile. OK, so we need to split them back to front. So if we press uh, shift and whoops, <laughs> I need to be in the right window for press one for front and then shift one. No, control one. Sorry, I told you wrong earlier uh, for back. What I need to do is split one end. And if I alt click on that line there and shift alt click on that line there, that should select the loop all the way around. And now that's going to add a seam for me when I right click and mark a seam and it's going to try and flatten these out now. So if I press A and then right click and unwrap, it's flattened them out as much as it, it can essentially. So there is a bit of a trick here. Uh, if you go to the unwrap options down the bottom, uh, you have angle based or you have conformal and you can often just switch between those two and you'll get a slightly different um, unwrap and sometimes that can straighten things out and sometimes it, it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that I haven't cut off the top and the bottom on this one. Um, that's because I'm more happy to have distortion there than I am to put a seam there. If I put a seam there then I'm going to have a seam top and bottom and that's going to interfere uh, with my texturing process. So I'm not going to put one there. Uh, but what you can do if you want to make it flatter is if I press the one key to go into front mode is I could add an additional seam. And if I do that, so Alt click on that edge there, Shift Alt click on that one there, right click and mark seam, uh, press A to select everything and then right click and unwrap. And that will have straightened them out a little bit. Yeah, just a small amount, but yeah, maybe it's enough. It's it's always a, a compromise. You have to kind of think about it. It's there's no one size fits all. You have to think about you know your modeling process. You have to think about your texturing process. Um, and sometimes, you know, you compromise and you add a seam where you perhaps wouldn't under normal circumstances. So don't think there's any hard and fast rules. Um, just follow the general principles. As few seams as possible, as little distortion as possible. Um, occasionally you might add an, an additional seam, you know, where you perhaps wouldn't under normal circumstances, just to take some distortion out. Yeah, or, you know, there could be another reason. OK, so uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, let's press Alt-H to unhide everything else. Um, once you've done that, once you've got all of your uh, bits mapped, uh, we need to pack this map because what I don't want is anything to be overlapping anything else because then um, my texture is going to overlap itself and it's going to start to look really weird. Um, so. Once you've got everything done, uh, because you've unwrapped them separately, it may be that they're out of scale. So just uh, right click again and press unwrap and it will unwrap them all and uh, correct the aspect ratio. So they're all in proportion to each other. Uh, that's quite important. Uh, having them in proportion to each other means that, you know, if you put one tile on one thing and another tile on another thing, they look the same size. If, uh, if one is bigger than the other in terms of the UV space, one will look high res, one will look low res, it will look weird. OK, so that's my pack done. Right, so that is essentially um, it for this. 
uh, but I am going to add a, an additional section to show you why I use this method personally over and above the project method, the smart project we saw earlier. So I will talk to you then. Okay, so let's see the difference between this kind of map and a uh, smart map or a smart uh, projection. Uh, I'm just going to go over to uh, the layout room uh, in object mode, select the barrel and press shift and D and then right click to drop it down. And then I press G and X to move it along the X axis. There we go, a bit more G and X. Okay, so let's go back to the UV room and there we go. They're both identical currently. Uh, if I select this one and press A, I'm in edit mode and uh, we will go to UV unwrap and smart project and OK. So you can immediately see um, that you know, while you could use this and you could paint on it, um, you know, it's not ideal. We've got bits of uh, map kind of zigzagging across. Um, you know, the rim looks slightly different to the top. Uh, similarly, on the bottom, you've got bits overlapping. If I press A to select everything. Um, yeah, it, it's not ideal. Usually I've got these half bands for the... Um, for the uh, for the actual band and yeah it's not terrific so you know while for yourself it might be okay if you were passing this model on to somebody else uh, I would not you know dream of passing anything that looked like this over I would only pass this one over which is mapped to the best of my you know ability okay uh, that's that um, I've got a couple of tips which might help you um, with this whole process, which I'm going to add to the end of this video. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're yeah, fed up of listening to my voice now, <laughs> I'll say goodbye. Otherwise, we've got a few tips coming. So I'll talk to you then or not. <laughs>
sorry, what did I say? I press UV <laughs> at pack, uh, pack islands. I will get a slightly better pack out of the whole thing. And, you know, my existing islands will become a little bit bigger, which means there'll be a, a higher res. Okay, <clears throat> what's next? So once uh, that's done, what should we do? We'll have a look at um, unwrap types. So when you unwrap, if I go to the unwrap option there, you'll have a little thing down here pop up. If you click in there, uh, you'll see there is a method. So we are currently using the angle based method and there's not much distortion and that's fine. But you might find on occasion that it switches over to conformal where you'll find there is a different kind of uh, map and it deforms more or it will deform less. And it's up to you then to just go between the two and decide which one uh, you want. Uh, on the subject of, of that, if I apply a um, subdivision uh, modifier to this, so I'm going to come out and then press tab. Sorry, I'm going to press tab to go into object mode. And then on my modifiers here, I'll add a subdivision surface. And then I'll apply it, use this drop down and apply. When I go back into edit mode, you'll see I, I have a whole lot more geometry. Uh, if I press A and unwrap, that comes out pretty good. It's not too much worse than the other. Uh, but if we go to conformal, you'll see that I'm getting more distortion. Um, and the tip there is that the lower resolution your mesh is, um, the easy the unwrap will be. The higher the, the resolution the mesh is, the harder it is. The harder it is to select for a start, and then uh, the harder it is for the UV unwrapping algorithm to eliminate distortion. So I would always advise to do it at a um, unwrap at a lower resolution. Okay, so I hope you found those useful. I hope you found the whole thing useful. Um, I am going to perhaps go and uh, listen to some music now. <laughs> uh, lay down in a darkened room. Um, if you have any comments, please, of course, add them below. Um, and if you play Elden Ring, let me know. Always, you know, <laughs> happy to meet a fellow Elden Ring player. Okay, so take care. I'll talk to you soon.